Shishi Ekev. This is part of the Shema. We say it once a day at least. Some of us say it more. And it's very simple. It's talking about what will happen if we keep the commandments and what happens if we do not keep the commandments. In verse 17 it says, obviously, that the wrath of Hashem will be against us and He will banish us from the land if we're not doing good things. And then it says, You shall place these words of mine, Hashem, upon your heart and upon your soul. Even in exile, we have to place these words on our heart, on our mind. Simply, it means the words of Torah. Torah studies an obligation that's uh, relevant today, relevant in exile, relevant around the world, not only in the base Middash. Rashi cites a Sefri that's very important. Rashi says, the Sefri teaches us that Jews should observe the commandments even in exile, so that when the redemption occurs, they will not have forgotten how to perform them. It's a very wild Rashi. Rashi on the surface is seeming to say that all commandments in exile are on a secondary level, only for when we return, we'll know what to do. That's, that doesn't seem, that seems like a blanket leniency on everything we do today. What the article left out is Rashi chose two specific examples, mezuzan and tefillin. Mezuzan and tefillin. Now everyone knows mezuzan and tefillin are based on the human being. Human being obligations apply everywhere. If you want to say certain obligations of the land and rabbinically you take it on, maybe. But tefillin and mezuzah, everyone's obligated, even in exile. It's a person. It's not based on the exile. So why does Rashi choose mezuzahs and tefillin to say that we should observe them even in exile so that the redemption occurs, we will not have forgotten. What are, what are, we, what are we going to forget? What are we missing here? So, my father, my Rebbe, says that tefillin and mezuzahs are made from mundane items. They're made from the skin and the hides of an animal. That's how the, the, the cloth was written on and the box itself. They're written from mundane things. And yet we turn that into something extremely holy. We have two levels in Judaism. Mitzvah objects and holy objects. Mitzvah objects are like tzitzis, a lulav. Holy objects must be buried. Tefillin and mezuzahs must be buried. We're taking items of mundane, the animal hides, the animal skin, and turning it not only to a mitzvah, something holy. So he wants to say this. We have to understand that when we have Eretz Yisrael, it's a holy place. And people will think to themselves, is that so holy? What do you mean? It's a land. It's just earth. No. Jews have the ability to make everything mundane into holy. When we go into exile, we got to remember that we can make it holy. We were sent into exile because we didn't keep the land and the mitzvahs the correct way to make ourselves holy. We could say as well that when we are in Gauls as well, why those mitzvahs? To remind ourselves as well that while we're in exile, we should know to make ourselves holy. Our own bodies, which seems like something mundane and physical, we have the ability to turn our bodies into holy things. When you stand next to a holy, great, righteous person, and many times you'll feel different. Why? Because their entire essence becomes holiness. Not just the actions they do and the mitzvahs they perform. They themselves become holy. To the point where, halakhically speaking, some people say that righteous people are not even contaminated as corpses because their whole body became a vehicle of spirituality. That is the goal we should do, even in the exile. And hopefully we will be able to finish the Rashi and that when we, the redemption occurs, we will not have forgotten this lesson and we will have a smooth transition into the redemption forever.